Well, dating is a very interesting thing. Uh, you learn a lot about human psychology, you learn a lot about yourself. It could be a very painful experience, but it could also be one of the unique, special experiences in life. So in my lifetime, uh, I've been fortunate enough to uh, date women. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to date a MILF. A MILF stands for a mom I would like to, you fill in the F word, but in my experience, most people still consider, most women still consider it a compliment if they're considered a MILF uh, because it they makes them feel desirable. And, you know, there's five lessons that I've learned dating a MILF, and these lessons are all based out of respect, and you'll see that I respect men and women equally. And, of course, I'm speaking from a man's perspective because uh, I'm a man. I can't speak from a woman's. But the number one lesson I've learned dating a MILF is a woman is still a woman. You tend to think of grandma as grandma. You tend to think that someone older was not someone younger. The same mind that is in a 50, 60-year-old woman is in one sense the same mind that she had in her body when she was 20 or 30. Sure, she's different. She's um, a different perspective, different experiences. Uh, good to see Eric on the live chat. But a woman still wants to feel pretty, still wants to feel appreciated, um, still wants to uh, experience the, uh, the womanhood. Uh, you know, uh, to be desirable, uh, to be pampered, um, uh, to feel safe, to feel protected. Uh, that doesn't change. Uh, number one lesson I learned, a woman is still a woman. Uh, good to see you, Christina. Uh, number two lesson I learned, I go right into it, guys. I don't want to waste time. Good to see you, Adam. The number two lesson I learned is if you're dating a woman in her 50s, let's say she's 50. She is on her last 10-year run. She want, she knows that when she hits 60, she goes into another dimension. She is still alive. She'll still want to date. But in, in their 50s, and I learned this too, I observed, you know, my mom and other people, is that they really want to get out there and date again. Their kids are grown. And by the time they're 60, they want to stop dating because they don't want to get old in front of their mate. And they don't want to have to deal with um, someone else. Look, they're going on their last 10-year run. Okay, You know, like, uh, you know, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, when he came back, they're like, this is our last run. You know, this that's it. You know, a woman, once she hits 50, if she's still heavy in the dating scene, she's going to hit that thing for about 10 years, maybe. But you are not in her 20-year plan. You're in her 10-year plan. You, you know, you're getting a 10-year loan, okay? And after that, she wants to fade away into the darkness. Uh, that's kind of, again, my experience. This is in general speaking terms. Good to see you, ESP. Great to see you, Eric. So you're dating an older girl? No, I did. I date no one now. I dated, uh, you know, in my youth uh, somewhat. I dated uh, in my 20s, and then I got very recluse, and then I dated again in my early 30s. Uh, I really have never been a long-term relationship guy. It's just not how, my, how I'm built. Um, and uh, I would say, like I said, I'm fortunate to date people, not a Casanova, uh, but certainly not a destitute, uh, desperate person, uh, just someone who has experienced some dating. And these are my lessons when I dated a couple uh, older women, uh, my experience. Uh, that's it. That's all this is. It's just a basic, simple video. I'm not trying to make anything more of it, but it'll help some people. The number three lesson I learned is a MILF wants good food, mainly dessert. Okay. A MILF does not want steak with soy sauce. A MILF wants desserts. Okay. And she wants to have fun. She wants to go out to eat, to dinner, wants to have good desserts, good fun. Um, doesn't want heavy meat, doesn't want <coughs> um, meat and potatoes. <laughs> they want cupcakes and desserts. That's it. You know, that's food to them, desserts. 
<clears throat> Excuse me, let me take a hydration break. She like, if you think you're going to prepare a meal with asparagus, sliced salmon, um, a sprinkle of oregano, pasta, all these different things, it may be okay, but they're real... The real objective for a MILF when they're eating is dessert. Hold on. We got my man, Richie, $10 super chat. Thank you for everything, buddy. Well, Richie, I read your comment, which was super inspiring before I went live, that pretty much what you got from my videos was show up and take the promotion. You did that. You gained your financial freedom, but you also stepped up to another level of your potential, your confidence, and your empowerment. When you take the promotion, you empower yourself. When you don't, you devalue yourself. And there was a lot of other things that you were talking about. But what I want to tell you is your first step to minimalism is to increase your bag and decrease your expenses. Because the biggest trap with minimalism is people try to live in poverty and then they cut their expenses. That's not freedom. Now, again, if you can't help it, if there's seniors out there, if there's disabled, if there's people that cannot comprehend... I have extreme compassion on the mentally disabled, physically disabled, or very elderly. But I've met, most people I've met do not fall in their category. Statistically, they're not. But they act like they are. They act like they are. They, they cannot do things. And, and I understand because it's easier not to do. It's, it's easier to be lazy, easier to take a nap. But you decided to tap out of your greatest potential. And you did that. And you, I acknowledge you. And I thank you for that chat. I thank you for sharing your testimony. I thank you for showing up and excelling, and I thank you for your testimony. Everyone in the live chat, everyone who ever watched this video, is that take the promotion. When in doubt, take the promotion. When in doubt, don't buy something. Why? Because then you end up with more money, less expenses. Uh, and, I, and I have tremendous um, congratulations to you, and thank you again. That's very awesome. So like I was sharing, it's... Don't go through an extravagant meal planning, okay? Remember desserts and the fun things, you know? Um, whether I spend time with my mom or when I was dating a MILF, the, the desserts are the meal, okay? Uh, and when you're at that MILF stage, we're going into number four now, the MILF doesn't want you to be too skinny, I had a skinny psychopath that trolled me, and, and I've been repeating what trolls are only for my own awareness and for any other creator. Remember, a troll is not a hater. They're mentally ill. They're mentally disabled. Because no one who is mentally well trolls. There's no value. There's no money. There's no progress. There's nothing in it for them other than to destroy their mental health. So remember, when someone's trying to troll you, all it is is someone with serious mental problems has nothing better to do. Okay. And what I learned when I had this one mentally ill, skinny troll who looked ugly trying to comment on my looks was he was like a MILF. You know, anyone, you don't want to be too much of a threat physically as far as looking better than them or being in better shape than them. A MILF actually wants you to be a little bit with a dad body. Okay. Why? Because remember, you're dating a MILF that likes desserts, that's on her last 10-year run, and she doesn't want the pressure of some workout maniac drinking protein shakes like she's in her 20s. Remember, a MILF stands for a mom. That means she already had her kids. So when she looks at you, she's not looking for your DNA to produce good kids. Yeah. See, when a woman meets a guy in their 20s and maybe 30s, they're looking at your DNA, your height mainly, that's number one, uh, and, you know, how your DNA is because they want their child to look cute, okay, and, and to be physically a specimen. But when you're dating a MILF, they had their child. Now they just want dessert. They don't want someone who's competing with them, and they don't want too much pressure. And this, this is why I feel I got to share this video tonight. It's very powerful. Click this thumbs up if you're a MILF. Now, I know 80, you know, like 75% of my viewers are men. Most trolls are men, uh, even though I had some troll women. So, but I still feel like this is going to be helpful for some people. Uh, you know, again, I understand I'm a voice in the wilderness. I get it. I understand my videos aren't for everyone. But again, this is financial freedom. Take the promotion, start your own YouTube channel. Why? 
Uh, because look, then you can do it how you want to do it. Uh, that's what I would tell you. All right, let's go into the next one. Then we're going to all live comments. Um, the last one, fifth one, we're rounding up the tables here, guys. Be nice to her kids. Okay. If you want to experience uh, an older wo woman's coochie, you better be nice to her kids. Because that's the that's probably one of the number one requirements. You know, if, if a woman feels that she, you cannot be trusted around her kids, you're done. Okay. Uh, that's the ultimate. In, even in the wild, you know what really causes animals to attack you or other people? Most animals don't attack, a, but when they feel that their children are not safe. This is, I'm talking about like in wildlife. Okay. When they're, when, when, when you come by a rabbit's nest and there's young rabbits, uh, when you come by any, any abbot, any, uh, uh, any animal. So it's very, you know, a mother has a lot of instinct, uh, to have her children feel safe and rightfully so. This is a good thing. I'm just trying to share with you that, you know, it's like they say a man's, a way to a man's heart is a stomach and a good BJ, but a, a way to a MILF's heart is her kids. Okay. Uh, now, again, I'm not into playing psychological games. That's why I don't date anymore. No matter how you slice the pie. See, that's the one thing, too, I was a little encouraged about or I was excited about when I was dating a MILF. Sure, I wanted to see what an older woman was like. But I really thought, well, maybe there's less games. It may be less because, again, she's not sizing you up for her future. She's sizing you up for a 10-year run of fun, which is exciting. But it's still psychological warfare. Uh, any dating, young or old, is like, you know, you're, it's two people competing with each other psychologically. And if you're not competing with each other, it's boring. Then you're just having coffee. And if you're just having coffee, you're not dating, you're talking. And if you're just talking, guys, you're not having any fun. So it's like, it's like playing a video game. Now I'm going to address all the psychopaths who watch too much online content. You know what it is to be a gamer. Okay. And Yes, you'll get too frustrated if the game is too hard and you'll throw the game console and you'll say a lot of bad words. But if the game is too easy, it's not exciting. You need some level of competition. And that's what dating is. If dating is too simple, you will get bored. It's not fun. But if it's too hard, you'll get a restraining order, okay? Because, you know, that's not fun either. So what I want to tell you is this. I leave the dating for the next generation. The only time you will see me date again is if robots uh, eventually come online where they have a human, ex you know, a human exterior. Uh, I see beautiful women every day, um, and I really I find a lot of uh, value in women. Period. Beyond the sexual thing, I think women balance the universe well. Again, I respect men and women, uh, and they can be nasty just like men. Both. Both genders are nasty, okay, and both genders have value. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, what I would tell you is, uh, I just don't see me dating anymore. Uh, BLM five dollars super chat. Hey, brother, have you enjoying New Jersey so far? I could see in your face you filled with dread. Yeah, I filled with dread because, yep. Yeah, but I am enjoying New Jersey for the fact that I'm enjoying time with my mother and there is nice fall weather. So that I'm enjoying. Obviously, there's parts of the atmosphere, vibe and energy that I don't enjoy. And I don't enjoy the fact that now I'm going to adapt to New Jersey, which is great because I want to I want to be here. If I, if I didn't want to be here, I wouldn't be here. But I, I'm only mainly here for my mom. And it's and it is nice weather right now. But. The hard part is I'm going to adapt to all this. And then in a couple of weeks, I'm going to uproot my life again. And I got to go back to Florida. Do I want to go back to Florida? Yes. But this is the worst part about being a nomad. When, when you travel to different areas, you have to adapt to that area. Then once you get comfortable, you're going to move to that area. You're going to, you're going to leave that area. So then it's like that you're con moving is very stressful. Okay. And so when you're a nomad, you're always moving. Now, when you're in one location, you're just moving around less stressful. So uh, but I'm thankful I'm here. I, I got. What should you do when you get overwhelmed in life? Take one day at a time and remember your long-term strategy. Uh, one day at a time is always the strategy. Two is I have a lot of boundaries on my visit this time so that I don't repeat mistakes of the past. Three is that all we have in life is time. So 
I'm figuring out how do I want to spend my time and my money. And right now, I want to spend my time and my money uh, around my mother. Uh, it's not my long-term thing, but it's part of my long-term life, which is if something ever happened to my mother or me, I know that I allocated a certain amount of time, not too much, not too little, to enjoy quality time. And I've still lived my own life. Uh, for 11 months, I've been uh, in Florida. And even beyond the pandemic, uh, I've been on my own since I've been in my 20s. Now, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was still relatively close to my mom, you know, within a uh, within a drive that same day I could see her. Now, the only difference is it take me a couple of days if I had to go see her. And so, but, you know, uh, like I said, to me, I'm here because I have the freedom. Uh, I wouldn't be guilt tripped if I didn't come. If I would be guilt tripped if I didn't come, then I wouldn't come because I don't like I don't like to be controlled. And so now it wasn't always like that. Uh, you know, everything in life is a level of growth and evolution for everyone, including your parents. Uh, but like I say, you know, uh, I would I would also be visiting my father if he didn't get too controlling. Uh, but that's just his nature. And so, you know, one thing, the good part about getting older is you just accept people. And for me, once someone shows me who they are, I believe them and I don't try to change them. Uh, Lisa, $1.99 super chat. Thank you, Lisa. That's very gracious of you. Lisa, I appreciate that. Love to you, Lisa. Love to you, BLM. And love to you, Richie. Thank you all. Uh, let me go to these live comments, uh, guys and girls. Uh, thank you again for all the overwhelmingly positive people on YouTube. Uh, of course, I always deal with the negative. I try to share that with you guys, but I try not to stay stuck there. So remember, if what I'm saying does not apply to you, don't internalize it. Uh, because I, I do not, you know, like someone asked me today, one of my community posts, which I can understand they're a little bit bold. They say, oh, it's too negative. I don't like it. Well, you know, of course it was like, if, if don't date someone who loves Halloween because it's a sign they're a psychopath. Look, one is either you accept that, like, that's a little bit funny, but true. Uh, two is he was like, ah, you know, I don't really agree with that. Or three is you're a psychopath that loves Halloween and it totally offends you. And then you leave a comment on my channel. That's too negative. And then I tell you, because you got a uh, like a, a Elmo, what do they call those people like that? Like all those dark things that dress like an Elmo or whatever, emo, like over emotional. Then you like, yeah, don't try to change me. You know what I mean? Like if I don't like to date people that don't like Halloween, I'm a 41 year old man. Okay, you know what I mean? It's like I understand though. I don't want to act judgmental because I've been young, I've been immature. I get it. I've been on the other side of YouTube. You, I, and I've tried to do the same thing. And, I, and so I try to share it with you. I'm not above that. But I'm trying to tell you, you got to get past that. I've got past the stage of my life where I am immaturely trying to convince people of something. I'm just doing me. Uh, and, uh, you know, and if, if you're not vibing with that, I respect it. But then you got to move on. Because believe me, uh, I didn't do what I needed to do in my life so I could be 41 and spoon feeding people. Um, that's not what I do. Okay. I, I don't do that. I do, I do five, you know, I, I do me. Okay. In a respectful way. Uh, those who have met me in real life and those, you know, who connect with me and vibe me on the same level, they know that, you know, I'm not on some, uh, I don't want to hurt people, uh, but I also don't want to be changed by people. All right. Let's go to these live comments. Eric, thank you again. Love to you, brother. Christina, great to see you. Beautiful. Adam, you know, you're my guy. I know you're doing the best you can. That's my girl, ESP, very smart woman. And I think she can do anything she wanted. But am I going to try to control ESP? No. Why? Because ESP don't want to be controlled. Okay. She's so I think she's close to middle age. So, you know, even though she don't have kids, uh, one and one is don't ask a woman why she don't have kids. That's her prerogative. And uh, don't ask a man uh, why he don't want kids. That's his prerogative. Uh, what I would tell you is this. Don't ask too many people too much stuff because no one wants to tell you shit. That's true. And, uh, you know. Uh, now, if someone wants to tell you something, then you got to take care of them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a whole psychological game. You kind of, you know, I think of that movie, uh, what was it, like Ocean's Eleven or whatever, when they did the heist on the casino. And I remember them telling that one guy who they were setting up the heist. And they said, like, look, when you do your job, you want, you want to be direct, but you don't want to be noticed. Like you want to say what you need to say, but then as soon as you walk away, you want people to forget you. You know, it's like in one sense, there's a lot of value to that in many aspects of life. 
you know, like, I'm going to go back to these live comments. One second. I saw something online today or yesterday. It says, like, how do you influence people? And it gave, like, 10 ways to influence people. And I'm not saying it didn't have value, but it's a big game. Okay. Number one thing is smile. Okay. Number two thing is say hello. Then the number three thing is give a compliment. Okay. Because first is if you if you give a compliment first, then it's almost offensive. So the first thing I want you to do is smile to open them up psychologically that you're non-threatening. And then the second thing they want you to do is say hello before a compliment because they want to. Uh, everyone wants to do things in order. They want a formal greeting. They don't want you to stick your hand like you know up their butt. And then the third thing is they want a compliment. And this is not just men and women. This is just with humans. And I agree with that because I think that's proper. But also. Like, I also step outside of that and say, man, what a psychological game just to try to, like, manipulate someone. That's what you're basically trying to do. When you read books, when you read books about how to influence people, how to win people over, what you're basically doing is reading books on how to manipulate the human psychology. And so it's like there is a little bit of a game in life. Now, look, I'm genuinely nice to people at work and when I meet them in the public because to me, I do try to overall follow the philosophy of, you know, try to treat people how you want to be treated. You know, to me, it's just like cool vibe. Now, again, I get rough a little bit online because I'm sharing a mindset. And then many times I'm dealing with mentally ill people. So there's a back and forth. But like I say, my life, I, I, I'm pretty confident in, in my life testimony and my life history. And, but I'm also like, this is what I learned, like, you know, in church a little bit. And then I learned it in like self-help stuff. I learned it in psychology is that... There's this whole game of how to win people over, and it's all about uh, on guarding their mental defense systems, not making them defensive, defensive, making them feel comfortable and complimented. And that's the same thing with a MILF. Like, you know what I mean? Don't don't make her feel like you're a threat to her. If anyone feels like you're a threat, you're you're not gonna get hired, you're not gonna get in the panties, you're you're not gonna get anything, you're not gonna get the job. <laughs> you, you, and, you know, but you, but you shouldn't be a threat. You know, it's like, to me, that's not a game. Like I'm not going around trying to threaten someone. You know, I'm not trying to take someone's money to take someone's life. I'm not trying to take someone's job. I'm not doing it. So to me, th that flow comes natural. But when I just, when I started reading these self-help things and the psychology, there is like, there's certain people like, this is like, they're training their minds to like manipulate others to influence them. It's a little wacky, man. It really is. You know what I mean? Uh, back to these live comments. Eric, yep, no, I dated an older woman. So we're just reflecting on lessons learned. Uh, Eric, 10-4, understood. I appreciate you. Thank you for your comment. Lisa, thank you again for that super chat. And thank you for being a member. Uh, many, a few, a lot of the members that rarely come in here but show the channel support. So thank you. And let me read this comment. She goes, hi, I'm in the Northeast sleeping in my car. Great time. Fall weather is the best time to live in your vehicle. She goes, third night, got the Nomad Essentials. Yep. What are the Nomad Essentials? Uh, window covers, uh, gym membership to a 24-7 gym, uh, and, and, a, and a job. Uh, because in my experience, if you don't have a job or a steady source of income, maybe you're retired, maybe you have other money coming in, and you know everyone keep that private. But how much money do you need to come in? Because that's the number one essential. Uh, to me, you need at least $3,000 a month. You, maybe you can make it work on $2,000. Uh, now, some people say, well, what about destitute Deb? She's living on 800. Uh, look, destitute Deb is not going to be in her car past three months. She's going to go back and forth. She's going to be in her car, then out of her car, in her car, out of her car. And she's always going to be a struggle on the road because $800 may get you by on the bare essentials. But eventually you have a breakdown. Eventually you need a new car. And then eventually you're going to go off the road. Um, so like I say, you know, you could be a Walmart greeter and make $2,000 a month. Uh, you know, all you got to do is show up and smile. Smiling is underrated, man. You know, and some people can't do that. You know, some people show up and they, they frown, you know, so it's not easy to smile guys. It's a very hard lesson. Uh, but like I said, guys, I, you know, Bob Wells and other people, I'm almost saying, I, I hate, I shouldn't pick on them, but like other people tell you like you could live on this and that, and maybe you could, but to me, I'll never preach that. Uh, you know, so, but the bottom line, Lisa is. Um, those, that's my opinion. Bottom line is you're doing it. Uh, and so I appreciate you, Richie. Thank you again. I read that you're doing a great job. Uh, keep doing you very proud of every, all your accomplishments. Lisa, 
Jim, yep. unlimited phone data plan and window coverage. Yes, that was my first. And, and I mentioned the income. Of course, I was just going off what I've experienced. But my first, one of my first videos was, what are the three things you need to live in your car? And that's what Lisa's quoting. It's a gym membership, unlimited phone data, a phone data plan and window covers. That's true. Now, remember, with a gym membership, uh, that's always a hub, that you a resource that you can go to. Uh, and you could work out. You could work the night shift at Planet Fitness. Okay. And then you never have to worry about where to park because you're working at night and during the day you could park at any public park. Unlimited phone plan, uh, not just for your entertainment, not just for your business, but you can also, again, you could DoorDash, Uber, Instacart. And window covers is because tents, tents do not black out all the external light. You need to be able to shut your body down and you need some privacy. And as a third thing, just in case you ever did have someone come in, you want them to unwrap a present. You don't want them to see a sleeping bear. Okay, so you don't you don't want them to see what the bear has with them. So it's just a little extra uh, protection. Good job, Lisa. ESP, congratulations, Lisa. Lisa, you're doing great, and thank you, ESP. Christina laughing. Fancy salad, ship lobster, and yes, asparagus. Skip all that. Let's go right to dessert. If you eat dessert, you won't be a mill for long. Yes, you will, because what I could tell you is there's no way a MILF is going to drive herself crazy on the on the edge of an eating disorder. When you catch a MILF, she's going to be lost weight. Maybe she recovered from cancer or some other illness. I hate to say that, but that's my experience. And she, you know, she lost weight and or she, you know, whatever. She she got a divorce finally or, or she got in, in an extreme mode. You know, I lost weight when I got sick. You know, look, sometimes that's what kicks it in. And she wants to hurry up and get this date in before she turns back into a pumpkin. And she don't want to eat lobster. She don't want to eat salads. Uh, she's not in her 20s. She's in her 50s. She wants to go right to dessert. And she don't want you to be in better shape than her. Why? Because she don't want that pressure. Okay. We're talking about the five lessons you learned when you did a MILF. And if you don't believe in this, you guys have not dated a MILF. And most of my viewers are men. Most trolls are men. There's a few ugly women out there that, you know, they're thinking that if they troll someone hard enough, they're going to get with them. But I don't know where you got that psychology. I mean, again, if you really want to win someone over, you're actually supposed to be nicer to them. OK, it's like, you know, there's some trolls that operate off the psychology of like if I threaten someone enough and if I talk bad enough to them, I'm actually going to win them over. Guys, I don't know. You're reading a book from Halloween. OK, that's what Freddy Cougar does. You know, you're reading the whole wrong psychology. You're a psychopath. I hate to say it. You know, and I understand you're doing the best you can. OK, because you're mentally ill. I get it. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm trying to tell you it's all right, man. You know what I mean? Get back on your meds or whatever you need to do. You know, it's like, yeah, that's your psychopath. I hate to tell you, you know. But it's all right. You don't listen to anything anyway because, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. I understand that's like a MILF. You could tell a MILF she should, you know, here's a, here's a six. I'll give you a pro tip, guys. We're on fire night. Is never tell a MILF how to raise her children, okay? Because she got divorced from her ex-husband because she didn't want to be told what to do. So if you think all of a sudden you got the answers on how to raise her children, you got your mind, okay? You better just shut up, go out to dinner, mainly focus on dessert, and enjoy your life. Because she don't want to know nothing about what you think about parenting, even though she'll listen. Okay, and, you know, she just don't want you to be a threat to her and her kids. And uh, basically, you're supposed to sit there, smile, and, you know, maybe hang a, a recessed microwave and be quiet. And if you can deal with that, guys, you're going to have a great experience in life. I did. Uh, but if you get psychopathic and you th start thinking you're going to troll your way to the to the bedroom, <laughs> you psychopaths, no wonder online is your only form of intimacy. You guys are going to be stuck in cyberspace your entire life. <laughs> That's a shame. All right, let's continue these live comments. Uh, yep. Uh, good job, Christina. Eric, when I was in my early 20s, I dated an elderly, an older woman. She was actually my mother's secretary. That's interesting. It was a mess, honestly. Yeah, that sounds pretty wild, man. That sounds like a novel. Shout out to you, Eric. ESP. Agreed, Christina. You can't live on desserts alone. Uh, you, uh, you, you guys aren't in that MILF mode. Uh, give me some salads and asparagus. Well, ESP, you're still young and you're still trying to date. Did you see Nate? Nate is boring, man. I hate to tell you. I watch Nate videos. I mean, this guy's got to be boring, like in bed, in renovations. Everything is boring. He's like, 
Like the the most exciting thing about Nate is he's got a fucking wallet. That's <laughs> he's got a metal wallet. You know, I was like, man, this motherfucker boring as shit, man. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, like that's the most exciting part of the video. Here's a metal wallet. You know, it's like, come on, man. You know, it's like his RV is not even exciting. Like you know, Japanese import everything about that guy is boring as hell, man. You know, but I don't know some people like boring, man. I'm t I see. I'm talking about when you dating a. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about dating some average person. See, like maybe you guys think I'm talking about like dating the average boring person or anyone. I'm talking about you dating like top people. You know what I mean? Like you're dating the elitist. You know, you're dating the best looking women in the world or the best men. You know, yeah, you're not dating like some ugly psychopath with a bad wig. It's like, guys, anyone can do that, you know? It's like, you know, we're trying to go to another level. I try to tell you guys about South Florida, okay? Because I want you guys to go to another level in your life. But I, I fear that a lot of people are not going to go to that level. But I, I, all I can do is what I can do. I can't do your job, too. And I'm not talking about anyone here. I'm just sharing in general. You know? uh, good job, ESP. Yeah, ESP said, give her something. Yeah, nah. And even with asparagus. And, and if you're dating a MILF, she used to love sex in the city. And she watched Sex and the City, so she automatically thinks anyone who eats asparagus is going to have spunky sperm. And if you don't know what that means, you've never watched Sex and the City. And if you've never watched Sex and the City, you've ne you're not going to do good dating a MILF because that was their favorite TV show. Christina, sorry I'm misspelling. I got what you were saying. I mean shrimp. Yeah, either way, she doesn't want she doesn't want to know anything about shrimp. It's all about dessert, guys. And I'm telling you right now, if you guys don't know that, you're not dating. ESP. Mr. Robinson, yeah. Well, that's how I think. That's how I think. Uh, Nate is. Nate's like dating Mr. Rogers. That guy, like, all right, guys and girls, here we go. It's another imported van, and my girls on the West Coast are gonna get together. We're gonna do a renovation. We're gonna do a propane stove. Like, this motherfucker boring as shit, man. I go to bed when I watch his videos. I hate to say it. And let's stay positive. BLM, thank you. Oh no, I read. Uh, Eric was laughing at ESP. Uh, I can't lie. It was fun, though. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Thank you again, BLM. Thank you, Lisa. My man, Chris, living full-time in his Class B uh, with a bad dysfunctional relationship. How's it going, brother? My dad always told me, if you got tits or tires, it's trouble. <laughs> well, you know, you you living on tires, what tit? Yeah, you got, you got a whole mess in that Class B. He goes, I never want to bed with an ugly woman, but sure woke up with a few. Well, look, now I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to make the statement about calling someone ugly or something like that. But, you know, I mean, uh, beauty's an eye to beholder. Uh, but, you know, this is mainly just a dating thing, but I get you, Chris. Oh, $5 Richie promotion super chat. You saved me a bunch of time and money. I believe a studio will be perfect for me. I agree. I remember how you said 500 square feet is plenty of space. It really is. I definitely agree with that. Every time, if you ever buy a house or rent a place, go buy the square footage first. That's the first metric you should look at with regards to housing. Square footage, square footage. One person doesn't need more than 200 square feet. So actually, if you were a single guy or single girl, you can live in a studio apartment 200 square feet. 500 square feet is max. Anything over 500 square feet is too much. Because 500 square feet can accommodate two people. Now, if you're married, then you need 2,000 square feet. Why? Because the only way you stay together is if you got separate parts of the house. Okay. <laughs> but when you're single, you want to be with yourself all the time. That's true. <laughs> I ain't lie about that. So I want to tell you, Richie, you're doing great, man. You took the promotion. You took a smaller house. Uh, you, you took your life to another dimension. What dimension are you in? You're in the 55th dimension. What's that? The dimension... Okay, of prosperity and growth. Okay. And what I could tell you, you've walked right into it. You did the work and congratulations. My man Chris, on oh yeah, I read that. I love you, brother. Chris, 87 degrees sunny today in paradise, still 74 tonight. Well, yeah, shout out to you, shout out to South Florida for the win. Uh in New Jersey, it's like a 73, very low humidity, sunny, beautiful day, beautiful fall day. It's gonna be a beautiful week. So I will admit fall weather is very nice. Okay, and I got no problem admitting that. I've tried to be honest with you guys and girls. If you're going to come up north, the time to come is the middle of September to the middle of October. The problem is most psychopaths start migrating south right now, and they miss out on the best. They come up north in May, which is the worst time to come up north. Why? Because it's still cold spring, okay, and 
all the psychopaths are biting at the bit to get to the shore because they've been hibernating all weekend, all all winter. And then all summer, the all the all the beaches are packed because all these psychopaths have been hibernating. Everyone comes up north in the summer. And then as soon as summer's over, they all leave. They leave at the best time of year. The best time of year to be up north is the middle of September, middle of October. I shared another gem with you guys. This is value. Chris, how is your mom doing? She's doing great. Thank you for asking, brother. Love to you and love to your girl. No disrespect. I love, love to you both. Yeah, my mom's doing great. It's been a blessing to spend time with her. And I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful. Uh, of course, there's boundaries. Of course, there's time management. But it's going good. And I thank you, Chris. I thank everyone who's asked. I thank my man, Big Plan Dan, if you're watching. Uh, thank you for your gracious love and support on that as well. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I really hope that a, a variety of my videos help in a variety of different ways. Uh, like I said, this is just one video out of many I share. I'm going to do more topics. I think tomorrow I want to talk about uh, starting a business because uh, I've had three businesses and what I learned with that. Uh, but remember, the best business you can have is to work for someone else and to keep working and take the promotion because most businesses fail uh and you know that's fact that's statistic fact uh so you're better off to be an employer than than uh, owning your own business in most instances uh chris have you decided if you're getting an rv no it's still on the table uh a class b or a small travel trailer still on the table uh but, but the home base i, I kind of rather go home base the, the cheaper easier option would be class b or, or small travel trailer um, but I just feel that, and the only reason I would even consider that is because I'm still in this flux where, you know, my mom's still up here. I'm, so, you know, but the reality is unless there's a major issue up here, uh, I'm going to be in Florida 90% of the year. So if I'm going to be in Florida 90% of the year, and I know the areas I like, do I want to invest money in an RV, which is based on mobility, or do I want to invest in a home, which is based on stability in an area you like that, that has an asset that appreciates. And I tend to lean to the home base if I can find the right one. The problem is the inventory is so low right now and prices are so high. It's not an easy decision. Uh, and that's why I've been defaulting to, to when in doubt, don't buy, uh, because I don't need to rush. You know, I understand that uh, it frustrates some viewers because just like me, you want to go to another level. Uh, you want a decision. But, uh, you know, like I say, I have to do what's best, in my opinion, for me in my life. And right now, you know, like I said, I can admit that there's probably a couple that I may have not, should not let slide by, but uh, I just wasn't ready. Uh, Chris, Class B Breezeway in Sebastian will be nice. Well, one is, again, love and respect to you. I got nothing but love for you. You've been very gracious to me, and I appreciate that about you, Chris. I really do. Um, and I like the Sebastian area. I would consider a home base in that area, possibly, but I don't know if I see myself in a Class B uh, in, you know, I don't know. Like I say, it'd be a great tax write-off for my YouTube channel as long as I have it, and it, it'd be very easy to get into because to buy a Class B, I go to, the, I go to the, it's like buying a car. It's, it's very, it's a lot simpler than buying a house. Um, and if I buy a class B, I don't want it to be longer than 18 feet. I want it to be, I want to be able to get it serviced anywhere like a Dodge Pro Master 1500. But I don't know if I want to drive that every day. And, you know, that's a little negative. Uh, I'm a very active person still, and I like to drive around a little bit. So, you know. Uh, the, the travel trail, they're the very light ones still out there too. I, I think about that. So we'll see. Uh, it's still, it's still an option on the table. Christina, good night, everyone. Christina, we love you. And you remember you keep living your life one day at a time. We appreciate you. We respect you. And I thank, I thank you, Christina. I hope that all your dreams come true, whatever they are, you and everyone in this chat, Chris, everyone. Uh, so we love you, Christina heal up as well. If you're still, I know you're still healing. How? What's up, brother? Hey, what's good, my brother? Hey, man, you tell me. Tomorrow's back to work. Get that money. Hey, how? what would you rather do? Wake up tomorrow with no job, lay around, troll online, or wake up to a job that you probably, you know, no one wants to go to work, but you, at least you have a stability. At least you have um, a, a career that you're building. At least you have hope for the future. You know, like I tell you guys, when you wake up, and yeah, certainly I'm sure it may feel good to have no responsibility. 
but you also have no assurance of financial stability. And, and that's what I'll tell you, if you're going to already have to, in life, if you're already got to show up to something for 40 hours, why not take the promotion? You got to be there anyway. You got to do 40 hours of your life. And that's what I tell you, move up, take the promotion. Nice and easy. What's good, my brother Sam? Blessings to you and your mom. Thank you. Blessings to you and your loved ones as well. Hope she's doing well. I thank you. A lot of people have been very gracious asking about that. And I appreciate that. And I thank you. Chris, stay in your car as long as it can. it's working for you. Chris, that's actually great advice. Um, you know, and I've been very consistent with that is look, start in the current car you have, uh, because look, I looked at RVs when I first started this nomadic life and I said, man, you know, statistically, logistically, statistically, meaning, you know, how much RV cost and then either the camping fees or the fuel efficiency, plus the logistics of where you're going to park it. You got more eyes on you, where you're going to get it serviced. There's a lot more complication than the simple car and the simple car that you already have. And so again, for a single person in relatively good health at a relatively, uh, mod, uh, younger or middle age, a car for most people would be fine. Um, you know, again, as you get older, you're certainly going to want more comfort and you always need to have enough money to get off the road. Uh, but you're right. How? I work this weekend. Oh, good job, Playboy. Then it sounds like you're going to be off tomorrow. I have off this Tuesday. Good for you. And next week, and how you're doing a great job. Uh, you sound like my man Rich who came in here tonight. Uh, you guys are killing it, man. You guys are doing your work. You're showing up. You're engaging. And you're excelling. Um, and you're getting through it without killing yourself. Uh, you know, you can do that. You know, you can work without killing yourself. Uh, you can uh, build your career and build your life. You can live a simple life uh, and have a job. Uh, you can live a nomadic life and have a job. Um, and you can do a lot of things in life that you don't think you, you can do. Uh, but you got to take everything one step at a time. Good job. Chris, you live more of the dream in your car than I do in my class B. Well, Chris, oh, again, I want to thank you, man. You've been very gracious to me, number one. And... Um, I just appreciate you. I just want to say that. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, the main thing in life is your health, uh, you know, then your financial independence, then your quality, your relationships. You know, I've worked hard, though, at all those things. And I've gotten a little bit, you know, I got a little lucky. You always got to have some grace and some luck. But I really worked hard on developing myself financially, emotionally, physically, and developing the boundaries and the relationships I have. Because I see how people get sucked into this dark abyss of a bad life. And it's very easy to. Uh, and I've went through bad periods. And that's why now I'm very intense about how I go upon doing things. It's not because I want to be a drill sergeant to anyone else. Because that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm single. I don't want to enforce my views on anyone else. But, I, you know, sometimes I'm off-putting. Because I am intense as far as like, not in person, but like online when I share my mindset on this channel. But I'm sharing with you this intensity because that's what it takes, not how you should look at other people, but how you should how you should look at yourself and view others maybe. Because if you're not that intense about how you want to organize your life, I don't care if it's your mother, your lover, your brother, your friend, your relative, guys, you're, you're going to go down a bad route. And someone who's abusing prescription pills and alcohol is going to give you advice. Someone who's in a bad relationship is going to give you relationship about advice. Someone who didn't take the promotion is going to give you career advice. And then before you know it, you're in this algorithm of taking advice from other people that have failed themselves. And then before you know it, you're at the Christmas party with an ugly sweater and ugly life and you're drinking Dunkin' Donuts. What the fuck? Guys, hell no, man. I'm coconut shrimped out. I'm never paying state income tax. I'm never wearing an ugly Christmas sweater. I'm never, never going to be around snow the rest of my life. Okay. Now, again, if I needed to for an emergency or if something happened, look, I'll do what I got to do. I got videos. ESP got wrapped up in my algorithm. She had the video recommended to her 
from me uh, three, four years ago when I was living uh, in New Jersey in my vehicle and I was in snow, buried in snow. And she goes, damn, Sam, you know, you had a plan. You went after it. And I said, look, guys and girls, you know, this is what it is. It's like, you know, I would look at this snow and I would say to myself, you know, I don't want to live this life. I don't want to live a life where people tell me that, oh, I like four seasons. I hate four seasons. I hate them. You know, I like a little bit. I like a little bit of fall weather and I love to see my mother, but I hate four seasons. I hate, I hate snow. I hate cold weather. I hate when the hawk is out. The hawk is that wind. Okay. I hate ShopRite. I had one of my great viewers, uh, shout out to Mama and Solomon. You know, I got, you know, and they, they had texted me and said, Sam, you know, my mom, she, you know, they, they're up in the Hamptons living that rich life. Oh, my mom went to ShopRite. She said, it ain't that bad. Oh, well, I, 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 I love these. I love Solomon. I love her mama. I tell you, I, I'm not a ShopRite guy. I got to be in the elitist uh, uh, Sprouts, uh, Fresh Market, uh, even Publix. So I got to be, I got to be around an energy okay, that doesn't have, you know, this, and my mom worked at ShopRite going up. One of my first jobs, it wasn't an official job, but I went to my mom back then. I went with my mom to work. I bagged groceries. I got some change. So I respect ShopRite, but I don't want to shop at ShopRite. I don't want to know about the can can sale. And you say, what are we talking about now? We're talking about lessons of life. Because I share with you five lessons of dating a MILF. Some of you listened. Most of you just, you got me on your Roku TV. You're taking a nap. I know. I know what I'm dealing with. And the rest of you, I, I don't know, man. I, I hope I'm reaching. I think I'm reaching some people. Some people tell me I'm reaching. I, I appreciate that. Let's go to the next comment. Um, oh, shout out to you, Grutzman. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Chris. Oh, yeah, right. That. Hal, I rotate weekends. Uh, the weekends I work, I am off that Friday and Tuesday after the week. After the weekend. Well, one is, yep. Yeah, I like the fact that you have off on a weekday. Why? Because I used to have a similar schedule. Why? Because then you can do your errands when everyone's at work, there's less crowds, and you're working on the weekend where it's crowded that everyone everyone goes to the same spots on the weekend. So now you can actually enjoy your time off. It's easier to make uh, appointments. It's easier to relax and enjoy your day. So I always tell you guys, if you have social anxiety, uh, a big way to supplement that is to work the night shift or work the weekends. Uh, because what you're going to find is it's hard. It, there's a big demand for people to work the night shift or weekends because most people can't do it because they have a family. And this is, again, why it's great to be single. And then two is there's less major political pressure on weekends and night shift. And... If you struggle a little bit in dealing with people or if you're in a season of life where you're struggling with that, then, you know, you, you may not want to be working prime time, uh, you know, nine to five, Monday through Friday, where business and politics, they're at the peak. You may want to work on an off shift, you know, off, you know, we, so, you know, these are some tips I also learned in life, you know, my man Grutzen, one of my newest members, shout out to you. You're correct about the work. People definitely underestimate the time part. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, again, like I said, there's a lot of things, especially in 2021 that you can do. Okay. Uh, that, you know, like I say, if you grew up 30, 40 years ago, you would have to work in a, in a manufacturing plant your entire life. And yeah, you would have job stability, but you would have no life. Okay. And you know, even if you would have a pension, you know, and I, I get that, you know, because I had a little bit of a pension from when I worked electrical union, but I left electrical union because I said to myself, well, what do I want to do? Do I want to work 30 years, get a good pension, but waste? The, I don't want to work this job my entire life. So I made that calculated risk. And that's what I mean. A pension and all that's good, but not if you're going to waste your life, you know, now you got to balance it. You don't want to, you don't want to quit your good job and then become a Uber, Uber driver and have no pension. 
or no retirement, I should say, and then get into your 60s and 70s and be screwed. But you, there's ways to get around, you know, there's, you know, bottom line is show up, uh, work the night shift if you need to, but then take the promotion and go through seasons of life and uh, excel. Chris, you're so damn right about everything. You're the best, bro. Well, thank you. And I definitely will say I failed many times in life and I'm not right with it. Some of, some of the things I'm saying is just my opinion. I get that. And I, but I appreciate your encouraging words, but I totally understand that some of the things I'm saying, I'm not a hundred percent correct. It's just my opinion. Uh, and so I want, I want, you know, you guys and girls who are, are positive followers. I want to make that statement, uh, so that you know that you still always have to think for yourself. Uh, obviously you know me that I don't want to debate with people cause I'm not in that season of life, but I also don't want you to just listen to what I say and say, Oh, this is a hundred percent right. I want you to go figure it out for yourself and I want you to live a great life. Uh, with or without me, uh, because like I say, anyone who really loves you wants you to know that you can live without them. They want to give you the tools, the mindset, and the ability to develop yourself so that you can do for yourself and so that you don't need them. And if and and if we still willingly can connect, that's awesome, because then we both connect in willingly, not out of pressure, not out of obligation. And that's, that's the way to live your life, you know, how. Uh, can you sell laughing? Uh, can, oh, the can, can sell. Yeah. You know, the shop, right? That's the can, can sell. Yeah. You know, you're from up North and <laughs> shot to Brooklyn, uh, Grudson. Sorry. I meant about working on themselves. No, that's okay. I appreciate you clarifying. Thank you for both. Yeah. Look, I've had to work on myself dude, and you, and it, it never stops. I'm still working on myself, you know? So, and like I said, what you learn when you work on yourself you won't tolerate someone who's not working on themselves in your inner circle. You should tolerate everyone. I'm a very tolerant person. I don't bother anyone and I don't judge anyone. But in my personal, personal inner, inner circle, like my, my guys, I'm not putting up with nothing. I'm not dictating though. I'm not living with anyone. I'm not asking anyone to do anything that I want to do. But I'm telling you right now, uh, I'm telling you right now, if I'm putting in all this work to try to just get myself to... I'll be damned if I'm going to be chilling with someone who's taking a nap, okay, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, doing whatever. Try, hell no, guys, I'm not, I'm, you know, nah. I don't want to talk about fancy football. That's not the life I'm living, you know. Uh, Chris, I'm never lost. My girlfriend always tells me where to go. Well, love to you, love to your girlfriend. One thing I learned, a dating a MILF and just, just in life, never get involved in someone else's relationship. Never take sides. Uh, because even if you're right, what's going to happen is they're going to get back together. Like Chris, you know, I don't know how long you've been with your girl, but I could kind of tell from my, and from my life experience that it, it's going to take a natural disaster for you guys to break up and stay broken up. Like you guys may like basically wish death on each other and you may have some very bad fights that everyone in the RV park hears, but I can almost guarantee you 90% of the time you guys are getting back together. And then even if, you know, she leaves or, or you leave, you guys are getting back together. There is a one to 5% chance that you guys break up and stay break up for a long period of time, but probably not until you, until you are very elderly or she is, or one of you die, or there's a serious major life issue. So chances are, even if a relationship is very unhealthy, and even if everything you are saying to counsel them is right, they're not listening to you. They're going back together. And it, I want, now I'm giving a lesson of anyone who wants to be a counselor, a friend, a pastor, uh, a therapist, a mother, a father. When an adult is in a relationship with another adult, you can give some suggestions and some advice, but you better be prepared for those two adults to be together, okay, until a major disaster happens. Because once two people get entangled, it's very hard to untangle them. That's why they call it an entanglement. And once two people live with each other, it's almost like civil war has to happen for them to not live with each other. And that's why I tell you, you better be very careful about who you date, about who you live with. Because before you know it, okay, you, you, you are Jada Smith. You're in an entanglement. Okay. And and before you know it, you're doing a live feed about five lessons you learned 
okay, living with someone else. And all five of those lessons are, I thought I could never get out. Okay. And it's only by the grace of God you got out. And I've been in some relationships only by the grace, even though I've never been a big, big long-term relationship person, I gotta be honest, that has never been my strength. I'm honest about that. Uh, but I, I've been in some entanglements that I say, wow, this is how people get stuck the rest of their life. And I can't take full credit for that because, again, I think some of it was like I, I kind of like always knew this is not good for me. I'm not that person. But I said to myself, wow, you know, I had to walk away from a couple people, especially later in life. I said, this is not easy. <laughs> okay. And I said, especially like if you're not really taking good care of yourself and you're not really confident and strong minded, you could basically get stuck in a dead end relationship your entire life. I mean, your entire life. I'm not I'm not saying that like theory, like in a theory, like in like, you know like a cryptocurrency, like maybe it'll go up, maybe it'll go down. No, I know. I'm talking about you're going to destroy, you're, this is going down. This It's going down. Your life is, it's a downward spiral. Uh, Chris says a hooker is cheap. Yeah, you know, but like I say, you know, one is, they're also illegal. And I, I'm not a big fan of paying for the cooch or, or paying for the D. Uh, you know, when I went to a stripper, uh, when I went to a bachelor party or two, you know, we had some of that and, you know, growing up, you know, uh, I dated some, some girls in a strip club and, and also there was this underground spot in Newark, New Jersey, where it's basically like just hookers. And so I I've dabbled in that world, but what I could tell you is that world is not a world you want to live in. Uh, that world is an extreme world where maybe it's a bachelor party, maybe like it's a late night thing. But if you entangle yourself or if you become a recurring customer, it does not end like Pretty Woman. Uh, if you're dating a girl and her favorite movie is Pretty Woman, you're basically, your life's over. Because what I could tell you is that's not reality. Uh, you know, and you're not Richard Gere. Um and it, 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 it ends very badly is what I learned, you know, so, you know, I don't know, you know, that, that's kind of just been my experience is that you don't want to, uh, there's an underworld in life and I've been, I've been you know, through the underworld and you, yeah, you, you, it's not a positive world. Okay. It, it's a world. Okay. Where there's a lot of illegal activity. There's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of uh, emotionally unhealthy behavior. And there's a lot of fun. Uh, but that fun turns to danger so quickly. I'll tell you right now. You know what I mean? Like you're having fun one minute and the other minute, next minute, your life is literally in danger. That's the life of, you know, so a hooker's not cheap, very expensive. You know, very expensive. You know, because even if it's $20, you, your life is on the line. Because when, when, when you're dating or, or when you're with someone a paid escort or whatever, you don't know if it's a setup, uh, a police thing or a underworld stick up, you know, so that's the world, you know, and, that, and, and you can't expect them to have empathy. That's the world they're in, you know? So like sometimes, you know, everyone thinks, well, yeah, they're nice to me, they're not, but they're in another world. You know, you don't know that world, you know, that in that world, you can't read people by the look in their eyes. Like there's been some people that told me, yeah, they, I look in their eyes. I could, you know, it's like when Bush, I looked in Putin's eyes, I could see his soul. This guy never spent time in the street. Guys, you can look in the, in the eyes of a drug addict. They can tell you anything and they'll never blink. You can look in the eyes of a killer. Guys, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you a straight line. So, and like I said, there's some people, they're delusional. They don't understand real life. And real life is uh, and very expensive to play in that world. Very dangerous. Okay? You don't, guys, you want to be shopping at Sprouts. Okay, you know what I mean? You you don't want to be stopping on 8th Street or whatever street. You know what I'm saying? You want to be in a place in life, okay, where you're looking for kale salad, okay? You're not looking for Katie on, you know, 89th Street, okay? You know, this is a whole nother mentality I try to share with you guys. You know, this is not, you know, why? Because I don't want you guys and girls to start watching surveillance video of robbed, uh, armed robberies that went wrong. Some of you psychopaths are doing that. You're watching surveillance video of like crimes, okay? And, you know, like what you're doing is you're creating your own P 
PTSD, your own post-traumatic stress. Every time you watch a crime, whether it's on a surveillance ca camera or a crime documentary, you're not learning. What you're doing is you're creating trauma on your mind. That's PTSD. So what these psychopaths who watch crime documentaries and surveillance stick up kids and like fights and all, what you're doing is every time you watch that, you're, you're, you're committing mental trauma. And that's why your mental health is a disaster. And that's why you're listening to SMAR music or whatever it is. And, you know, sounds of sleep and all that shit. Guys, that's got to put you bad because your mind is so unstable. You've been watching, you've been watching like, you know, the worst part of life. You know, it's like, I wish I could tell you so much more, but I feel like you guys are not listening. But I feel like you, you're listening. You're, you, you hear it. But all I can tell you guys, I've been on here for an hour and it's amazing. Like as soon as I get to the hour point, I feel like, Sam, you poured everything out. And uh, so there must be something special about an hour live is about the right algorithm. All right, guys and girls, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you to all my members, all Super Chats. Uh, if you haven't already, click the thumbs up. I thank you again. I have gratitude in my heart. It is amazing, even though it's very tough to share your life online. Overwhelmingly, there's a lot of people that just need a word of encouragement or they just need you to share your testimony. They don't need a bunch of fake self-help Tony Robbins stuff, even though that's what the masses want. So I recognize that I will I will probably never really go viral, viral. But I've gone further than most people will ever go. And if I do go viral, viral, the special part about it will be is I'm just being myself with a little entertainment edge on it, but pretty much just sharing my testimony. And I'll be able to reach people how I want to reach them. Uh, and so I won't have to go through the 10 steps of how do you win people over. Smile, say hello, say something nice to them. Even though that's valuable. I'm not playing psychological games with you guys. Uh, I don't want to do that to you. I treat you with respect. I treat you like an adult. Uh, I think you get further in life. Now, again, there is different protocol. Okay, There's a professional setting and a personal setting. So I, I certainly don't want you to treat life like YouTube. I don't want you to, you know, um, you know, I was watching something where uh, uh, a guy went to like virtual court uh, you know, like during the pandemic and he had a zoom meeting with the judge and his tag name was like, butt liquor 3000. And the judge was looking at his tag name on zoom. He was like, what's your name? And then he was like, yeah, Jeff Johnson or whatever. And he goes, you know, your tag name is butt liquor 3000. Right. And it was like, that shows you right there, guys. There's another dimension of your online persona and like, you know, it's like, you know, you know, even though every, you know, I'm sure that judge watches stuff like that, but it's just, you know, yeah, you gotta be careful. Oh, what's up, backslash? The the best uh apparel designer in the game. Good night, Sam. Backslash, man. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your creative gift of being a designer. I respect that gift. And uh thank you for your love, man. I appreciate you, backslash. Shout out to you, Chris Diamonds, everyone. I hope my videos helped you guys. Thank you.